People always come and ask me, Paul Keynes, how come you write so much about cricket? You used to play cricket when you were a boy. Well, I look at them and laugh because I never used to like cricket at all, at all, at all. Even I don't know why I write so much about cricket because as a boy, I never liked cricket. It's only when I grow up and I get old and thing, I begin to take real interest in the game. And because mostly because of the language, you know, fine leg, gully, slips, hang on the bat, you know. Uh, cricket is like a, a, a agriculture, you know, you have agricultural shots, you have sweep, you have cut, you have hook. It's a beautiful thing when it comes to language. But I never used to like cricket until I went to school. You see, in my dear school, you had to play games. Whether you're bossy back, one foot, no teeth, big bamsy, you had to play games. So when I go in there, I ask them if they have a marbles team. They tell me marbles, catchers, and search park do not count as games. It's cricket, football, and athletics. I had to make a choice. But boy, let me tell you, you have to understand, at that time, I was about 12 years old, about four and a half foot tall, weighing about 50 pounds, and I look like a half-ripe Lakatan banana. <laughs> you also have to understand that in those days, they never kick you out of school when you fail exam. You're allowed to take it over and over and over and over till you pass. So my school had once had a hard back old men <laughs> with beard all down to the toe who failed an exam since they were born and wouldn't leave school. <laughs> you know them like they take up residence in the school, they're old. And it's them playing football and cricket and running sports. And it's them I have to go and compete against. Well, boy, let me tell you something. I go and try out for athletics. Well, let me tell you, in those days, they never used to groom you, no coach. They bring you on the field and tell you, run. <laughs> if you run fast, you get picked. Bat. If you bat good, you get picked. Kick. If you kick good, you get picked. Otherwise, you stay behind the goal and collect ball when it pass. <laughs> you know? So that's why you see West Indians play such natural cricket. You have to be naturally good to get picked. Nobody ever coach you. So I decided to go in for athletics. Boy, when it came to Lyman Spoon, Wheelbarrow, Bag Race, I was great. But 220, 440, 100 yards was horrors. I run with all these old men with long beard, and they have on spikes. You ever get joked with the spikes in your foot yet? <laughs> was real horrors. Half that I run, I run to escape from them, me running to win was to escape from getting drunk with spikes. I said, this thing too dangerous. Let me try football. But I like football, not because of the game, because of the jersey. In those days, only the team was allowed to wear the school colors. You couldn't go and put on no school jersey like they have now walking by the road in the colors. You had to be a member of the team. So I wanted that jersey so bad, boy. I want to play football. I tried. Now, football, is a most unreasonable game. <laughs> 11 hard back men running up and down, up and down, up and down behind one stupid ball. <laughs> no rest whatsoever, you can't rest at all. And men kicking you and stamping you, kicking you down, knocking you down. Doing all kind of things to your physiognomy. <laughs> and you can't say nothing. And they're allowed to tackle you. Man say, tackle him, next thing a big rogue in your back. They didn't have football boots in those days, it was rogues, hard, hard leather shoes with pegs like skates underneath. I say football is a nasty, dangerous game. And the hard part of the jersey, when rainfall is still playing, you can't shelter. The nice, clean football jersey, mud. I say football is not for me. Let me try the gentleman's game, cricket. Now that is a game for gentlemen. Just like football, same 11 men. But half the time you're relaxing under the trees. <laughs> you know, drinking coffee and snow cone, eating roast corn, hamburger and thing, having a nice time. Then you go on, you swing your back, make a duck, and you're back under the trees again. <laughs> well, boy, let me tell you the problem. You see, in my day, that school I went to was so poor, we only had one pair of pads for the batsmen. One man wear one side, the next man with the next side. The bat, same size, one size bat for the whole team. If you're six foot or three foot, the same bat. 
When you say, I put on my pad and I walk out there and you couldn't get out, that's why you see it was hard to get West Indies team out LBW in the old days. Because then one pad, you couldn't do nothing like that in those days, padding ball out with one pad. It was no LBW, it was BBW, break foot before wicket. <laughs> you know? I remember the first time I go out for the team boy. They put me with one pad and you tie with handkerchief and no straps, tie with handkerchief. One pad with me all by my chest here. The bat handle, it takes two men to bring my bat out for me. <laughs> and I get out there, you know, and I'm waiting to hit the ball. Now, in those days, my idea of cricket was hit the ball as hard as ever and run for your life. <laughs> because when them men throwing back the ball, they're not aiming at the wicket, it's you they're aiming at, you know. <laughs> they call that intimidation. In the civil service, they call it constructive dismissal. Well, boy, I remember the first over, a bat. Two things they showed me before going. Forward defensive, backward defensive. Because they never thought I could ever hit the ball in my life. So I learned forward defensive and backward defensive. Well, go out to face the ball in. First ball, if you see me. And of course, people giving advice from all sides. Usually, mind their bush your head, you know, mind their bush your head. <laughs> kind of advice they give me. I walk out there, boy, pad up to my chest. Big bat by here, cap pulled down. I look like an ice cream can with a cap. <laughs> and I walk out. And I take up forward defensive, foot straight down the wicket. Bat and pad close together, head down, chin up. You know how hard it is to keep your head down and your chin up? <laughs> I hear them, watch the bowler in the eye. <laughs> the bowler cock the eye coming down and be so. <laughs> the captain say, you're looking good, but do that after the ball, the ball, not before. <laughs> Let me take you on, boy. I get ready again. First ball coming up, I do so. Forward defensive close, man, I ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I feel the breeze when the ball pass. By the time I open my eyes, I see them pelting the ball back up. <laughs> they say, keep your eye on the ball. Eye on the ball? <laughs> my eye was on the ball. That was the heaviest piece of wood <laughs> I ever had in my hand in my life. <laughs> Second ball coming up, I say, I hit in them backward defensive. I step back, back, up, head down, everything ready. Keep your eye on the ball. Eye on the ball? <laughs> my eye on the bat? Trying to keep it there from getting liquid. <laughs> but the ball had its eye on me. The ball hit the bat clap, knock off the shades. I don't shades in those days, you wear shades. You put them back, but you had to put on shades. A dollar twenty-five for shades in those days. Black, black. Fella say you don't have to close your eye, the shades are black, keep your eye open, you can't see anyway. <laughs> when the third ball coming up, I said, I'm going to hit this ball, even if it kill me dead today, I'm going to hit the ball. <laughs> and the man bowl one ball. I open my eye and I swing the bat. They tell me I make history. I should be in the Guinness Book of Records. I get catched by three men at the same time. <laughs> we can keep a catch the ball. Man in sleep, slips catch me hat. Umpire catch the bat. <laughs> At that point, I seriously begin to consider football one more time. <laughs> but what saved me, you know, I like the field. Because you used to put me on Long On. Now Long On is a lovely place. Nothing down there. <laughs> you could talk to people, enjoy the scenery, have a good time. You know, cricket going on up there, but nobody can hit the ball that far anyway. <laughs> so I love Long On. My whole cricket was spending Long On having a conversation, signing autographs, making good friends. Cricket going on, there is a different thing happening up there. <laughs> Until one day, boy, I on long on enjoying my life, having a good time, <laughs> participating to the best of my ability. <laughs> Anybody will catch it! <laughs> Some stupid fool hit the ball down towards long on, straight towards me. And he hit it hard. You ever see a cricket ball coming towards you at a hundred miles an hour? It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. 
You ever get last with a cricket ball yet? I say, this is one cricket ball getting dropped. But the captain inspired me, man. He said, if you drop that ball, I'll break your foot. <laughs> well, boy, I close my eye and I do so. I hear boop. Talk about pain. <laughs> my mouth opened in shock. I couldn't say a word. My little finger bent back and touched my thumb. Fingernail take off on holiday. People say that's the greatest chest you ever see. Men asking for autographs. I asking for ice. Well, to cut a long story short, on the basis of that brilliant catch, I get picked to play the first match. It was a total disaster. After I catch that ball, they tell me I was greater than Gary Sobers. I have potential. I could make the West Indies cricket team in about two more years. I is the greatest thing they ever see on the field. After this match, a ball won over. Six sixes, I hit me 36. I make duck and I drop five catch. That one, five. They tell me I'm the worst cricketer God ever put on the face of the earth. Go back, Grenada. They tell me, join convent, take up netball. <laughs> I am the worst thing they ever see. I was sell out the match. The same men who tell me I was greater than Gary Sobers. That is when I decide to take early retirement from cricket and take up the safest position on the field, commentator. They say cricket is a game of shifting fortunes and glorious uncertainties. But there's one damn certainty. I know for sure. This is one man. You ain't gonna catch up there getting lashed ball. 